So you want to become an expert. I'm going to share with you secrets of how to do this and a step-by-step -step plan. Now let me start off by saying who this is for and who it isn't for. If you want to be an expert lawyer, the career path for that is pretty set. You go to a good law school, you work hard, you get in with a great firm, you plug in the hours, you make partner. That's somewhat regimented. Same with medicine. You want to be a great surgeon, there's a very specific career path for that. You want to be a wildly respected economist, we'll get a PhD from MIT or Harvard and get hired by Princeton. There are certain fields that are very, very regimented. This course is for people who aren't in traditional professions of law, medicine, academia. So if you're any type of a business consultant, if you have business expertise, or a pa I mean, it could be a passion of basket weaving. It could be a skill like negotiation. It's really any particular area of expertise skill that isn't one of those very, very traditional career paths, law, medicine, academia. So let's start from the beginning. If you want to be an expert and get paid for it, because that's what this is about. It's not just how to be good at something. If your goal is to be the greatest expert on Bugs Bunny cartoons, you know how to do that. Just keep watching every single Bugs Bunny cartoon over and over and over again. You're going to know more than other people. Highly doubtful that you can make a career out of that. But if that's a hobby, fine. What this course is about is how to become an expert and make a career out of it, make money out of it. So the fundamental starting point is you've got to figure out what your niche is. Now everybody says, every self-help guru says, go with your passion, go with your passion, go with what your heart says. There's some truth in that, but that alone doesn't necessarily help you find a good niche because your niche may be something that no one's willing to pay for. I have friends where their passion is talking about New York Knicks basketball. They can talk about it passionately. They can talk about every single game for the last 30 years, the player statistics. They're really, really knowledgeable, but guess what? No one's going to pay them for that. It's almost impossible to make money off of that expertise unless you're a former pro basketball player and you get hired as a coach or an analyst. So, and this is the really hard part for people, you've got to figure out, A, what is the stuff you really care about that you're passionate for? If no one were paying you, you'd get up and read the news about that. You'd watch TV news about that subject. What is that subject? And maybe there's several of them. You've got to look at all of those. And then you got to look at what are all the things that people are willing to pay for? And then finally, you got to look at another little circle down here of what is it you're good at? Again, you might really be passionate about basketball, but if you're not really good at playing basketball or coaching basketball, even though there are people who spend money on basketball expertise, they're not going to hire you. As Warren Buffett once said, so much of life is about picking the right niche and it's ultimately a lot more profitable to be a middling or even a below average money manager than the third best poet in the world. I don't want to dissuade you from poetry if that's your passion, but that's sort of one of those that's back into academia where it's, you're a lot better off being a tenured professor at a major university who occasionally publishes and writes poems, but your salary is coming from your teaching position. That's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about people who don't have a fundamental cushion of a big university or a big, a big corporation behind them or a big government agency. You're on your own, you've got your wits, you're smart, and you're trying to make a living as an expert. That's what I want to help you with. So much of your future success is going to depend on one basic decision. What do you specialize in? And I can't stress enough that you have to really give this a lot of thought and pick wisely. I can tell you from personal experience what happens if 
you get three of those four things right. Again, the four things are, what does you have a passion for? What is it you're really good at? What is it that the market respects? And what is it that the market's really willing to pay for, specific to you? So for example, for many years, my passion was political commentary, hosting talk shows. And I was good at it. I liked doing it. I had a passion. Now, I was giving political commentary from a certain political spectrum. It wasn't as popular as, say, the Rush Limbaugh spectrum. Now, I loved doing it. I was good at it. But there simply wasn't a marketplace, unless you were already famous or had worked within the White House. There simply isn't a lot of demand for political commentators of a particular political stripe to make the money. So, I did that for years and didn't really make any money. Practically starved to death. <laughs> so that's a situation where I had an interest, I had a passion, good at it. There is some marketplace for it, but there, there really wasn't any marketplace for people hiring anyone remotely similar to me. So I picked a bad niche. So I had to step back and say, what is it that I am good at, that I like doing, that I have a passion for, that the market, there's a marketplace there, and the marketplace would actually hire an individual with credentials, anything similar to mine. And that was being a media trainer and a public speaking coach, because corporations all over the world, government organizations all over the world, actually hire media trainers. They don't hire political pundits. They don't hire talk show hosts. They do hire media trainers and public speaking coaches. So that's why I constantly encounter people who say, you know, my expertise is helping children focus on goals. And really what they're saying is they want to be, they've watched a few Anthony Robbins videos, they're bored with their current job, and they want to be the next Anthony Robbins for children. That may be noble, but it's almost impossible to jump into that niche, especially if you're not already really famous or rich from something else. because. Who's paying for that? If you want to go speak at elementary schools to motivate children to study hard, stay away from drugs, have ambitions, you can give speeches like that all day long, but you won't be paid. There's no marketplace for that. There's no corporate demand. Now, anything is possible if you work hard enough. You can always say, well, if I just land one corporate sponsor. I could get General Electric to give me $500,000 a year, and they'll pay for me to go to every elementary school in the world. It's possible, folks. I've never seen anybody really do that, but I don't want to rain on your parade. What I'm here for today is to give you strategies that will make it easier for you, that will save you time, that will help you get faster to a point in your career where you are making a good living, whatever that is for you, based on your expertise. And I want to help you avoid the mistakes that most people make who end up not making a living at this. That's what it's about. So you can always point to some exception breaking the rule. I do want to give you what I think are the rules that will help you get to your goals faster. You have to find a niche that is credible for you, that that relates to your own experiences, that relates to your expertise, and where people pay for it. If it's just something like, and I see this all the time, uh, how to live life more fully after age 50. I know a lot of people who try to enter that niche. Every single one I know has failed. Now, it is true that people over 50 often, re I'm over 50, I'm 51. People over 50 reevaluate. They are looking for new things, new books. So it's not that there's no demand, but there's only consumer demand. There isn't corporate demand. I'm not aware of any corporation in the United States or anywhere in the world that says, hmm, we need to hire a consultant today or a speaker, a keynote speaker, to come tell all of our employees how after the age of 50, they can still have rich, rewarding lives. I'm, just, I'm not aware of that. Therefore, that is a horrible niche in my professional 
view. Again, you can make a niche out of anything if you really want to, but life is so much easier if you can pick a niche where there's a marketplace, a public marketplace of consumers, but also a corporate marketplace where corporations have training departments. They have training budgets. Many corporations have millions of dollars to spend on outside experts every single year. The sooner you can figure out what your expertise is that can fit into one of their little budget boxes, the better life is going to be for you. Here's what doesn't work for most people. Say, well, I know, I'll just write a book. I'll write a book and I'll self-publish it and it'll be a bestseller and then everyone in the world will be calling me. I'll get speaking gigs all over the world, just like in the media, just like in the movies. It doesn't work like that, ladies and gentlemen. That's simply not the way to become an expert. You can say, well, I'll be the next Malcolm Gladwell. Look at him. He's getting $60,000 a speech. Malcolm Gladwell, before he ever wrote his first book, had already worked his way in to the most respected journalistic outfit in the world, The New Yorker, and he wrote story after story for years. He built a following before he ever got his first book deal. So I want to give you tips on how to start. Here's the homework assignment for you. You need to write down everything that you like doing. And I, I don't just mean watching cartoons, but anything that could remotely be of interest to other people, that helps other people, write that down. And then write down a list of everything you think you're particularly good at. What is it that you're really good at? I like tennis. I'm pretty good at tennis as far as being able to beat family members and friends, but I'm nowhere, anywhere near as good as the average captain of a high school tennis team who could teach. So no one, someone would be crazy to hire me as their tennis pro. So you gotta figure out what is it the stuff that you have a passion for? What is it that you're good at? What is there a marketplace as far as people actually paying for this? And then specifically, what is it that corporations actually spend money on? Look at all of those and then figure out what's in the sweet spot. What is something that you like doing, that you're good at, that individuals like and spend money on, and that corporations spend money on. That is your homework assignment. If you get this wrong, you can work 20 hours a day for the next 10 years and frankly starve to death. Or you could make money, you could make less money than working part-time in McDonald's. Now, money isn't the only metric, but if you're not interested in making money, then it's just a hobby. And there's nothing wrong with being you know, an expert stamp collector who doesn't ever want to make any money. But again, the whole point of this course is how you can make a career out of it, how you can make money out of it. And before you go off and write a book, before you go off and make 50 YouTube videos, before you make a demo tape on your speech, all, all these things are complete wastes of time if you don't have your niche really, really focused. I would also ask you to ask friends and family. If you still work in a corporation, ask people around you, what is it that they think you're best at that's valuable? That if they actually needed that area of expertise, they would hire you and they would advise other people to do it as well. If you don't have this yet, if you can't figure this out, I'm gonna save you a whole lot of time and energy and effort. Number one, you don't need to really look at the rest of the course. You need to just spend more time working at your current job or doing a temp or whatever and just spend time developing your interest. Read more widely. Adopt new hobbies. You've got to figure this out before you waste any more time trying to make money on expertise. I have one colleague who tried to enter the expertise business by selling, marketing a CD on how to make money as an expert. Now she'd never made any money as an expert 
and she'd never made any money as a product, selling products, but here she was selling a product on how to sell products to make money as an expert, and the product was awful, she had no credibility, and she made no money from it. And she spent a lot of time and effort on that, all completely wasted. So I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but <laughs> you've got to figure out the right niche. What are you good at? What do you have a passion for? And by passion, I mean you already read everything on that subject, even if no one paid you. Before I started charging any money for public speaking training, I had read a thousand books on public speaking. You know, I'm one of these weirdos where I'm not watching NBA on TV, I'm watching old political speeches from Republican and Democratic conventions. That's my interest. You've got to find something that interests you at that level and that people are paying for. So that's your homework. Write down everything you're good at, everything you like, everything people pay money for, and everything corporations pay for, and figure out what's the one thing that's on every single list.